Today we're busting out a quick steel stand for our new Mittler Brothers Ultimate Box and Pan Brake. What I wanted to do was build a quick custom stand for it. There are stands available from Mittler Brothers. They sell one specifically for that machine, but there are a few reasons that I'll point out why I wanted to make our own. What we're gonna do is we're going to cut all the tube pieces for this assembly. We're gonna use a belt sander to take the burrs off and give us a bevel for welding. But then we will tack it all together, double check that everything is square and good to go, and then we'll finish weld it so it's ready for paint. One of the main reasons that we decided to make a stand for this machine instead of buy one, this stand is made to be a little bit taller than the factory one. I'm six foot two and I'm the primary user for it. So having the machine up a little higher is gonna be a lot easier to use and avoid bending over as much as possible. The other reason is the factory stand has a shelf under the machine, so the machine sits on the top of this table, but knowing myself and the shop in general, that shelf will end up accumulating tools and pieces and parts until it's literally flowing off like water. So removing the shelf removes that problem for us on this machine. The other big thing is clearance. Sometimes we have odd shapes, long pieces, large pieces. One consideration was having clearance under the machine to allow for large bends that need clearance to go underneath. Generally, I advise against making custom stands and things for machines unless you have a good reason for it because it does take time and effort. You need to design it, you need to fab it, you have to cut all the pieces. There's painting, it's intensive, more so than the cost of buying what's available in general. We happen to have all the materials for this on the rack as scrap extras in the shop, so I literally had to buy nothing to make this. This is going to be part one of a two-part series on this project.
So when I'm starting to weld something, I like to lay out all the pieces, get as many of them together as I can that will fit on the table that I can tack weld in one session. And what I've done here is we've cut all of these pieces, we've deburred them on the belt sander, and that gives you a nice square surface without burrs, and this little bit of a chamfer you get gives you a little bit more material to bite into when you're doing the weld. I check everything to make sure it's all square, tack weld the entire project together and then go back and seam or do your structural or your strength welds. It allows you to reduce the amount of distortion that you're going to get from welding. Every point that you weld is going to shrink a little bit or maybe a lot depending on the material and the shapes that you're using. A good way to mitigate that is to tack everything so it has some integrity and everything is lined up the way that you want it to be before you go back and finish it off. And even finishing it off, you may find that it's better to do a certain pattern, certain areas that will allow you to control it. In fact, the shrinking on steel tubing can be so high that I'll use it to my advantage. I'll measure the angles or the position of parts as I go along welding it. And I can actually make adjustments to the precision of the part or fixture or assembly that I'm welding as I go using that shrinkage. And for this particular one, the precision is not that big of a deal. We could be off by a quarter inch and it wouldn't change how this is gonna function. It's gonna be a stand for a machine, but you can be very precise if you want to or need to be. As an example, this is one little fixture that I made a couple years ago. This is basically just a square. You have the two legs of the square put on some uh, stops here so I can get things straight to the square and also in line with it. X and Y, Z axes lined up. So I did a little cutout in the bottom here which gives you access to the corner of the part for welding if you need to. So it's literally just a reference. I cut the pieces as square as I could. I welded them together. I tacked them to get the alignment as square as I could. And then what I did on the bottom here is I just added some tacks to the bottom surface and then I just filed those off. And that's what I used to adjust it to be square to the table. So it's literally three feet on the bottom instead of the whole bar contacting the table. And with that little uh, tack ball on the bottom, you can file it and adjust it whenever you want to or need to. That's what I would use for vertical members and things like this. You have extra pieces or other pieces you're gonna put on later, you can use them as alignments. So for example, this piece here is not gonna be welded here, it's just a spacer or placeholder is going to be moved out here for the final assembly. I generally try to avoid clamps when I can get away with it. It's gonna save you time and frustration Generally, if the parts are heavy enough, you can set it up like this, go around and tack it, and nothing will move. But you do want to double check it after you tack it. That gives you a second chance to fix it or adjust it as needed. So this is our finished assembly. It's just tack welded, but it is one piece and this is basically what it's gonna look like. And this gives you the ability to move it around, reposition it, check things before you go back and seam weld it.
We do a wide variety of welding in this shop. I'm familiar with TIG primarily, MIG and oxyacetylene also, but for a project like this, I think MIG welding is probably the easiest, fastest way to get a furniture-like project like this together. I'm not certified in welding, so any tips and tricks are definitely welcome. I generally weld for aesthetics and strength. I don't do any certified projects, but to be honest, those are few and far between. So what we'll do in the second part of this video is going to be the prep for paint, spray prime and paint, and then we will actually mount the machine on the stand and show a little bit of using the machine and again, some of the reasons why we made this stand and see how it works.